Thanks so much for coming out this morning to hear me speak. I appreciate that. Um, you know, it's interesting. A lot of American speakers get up on stage when they get into London and they talk about how happy they are to be visiting London. And I have to confess, I can't say that. <laughs> not because I'm not happy. I'm happy. I just don't feel like I'm visiting here anymore. As a speaker, it's always a speaker's dream to be able to sleep in their bed the night before a presentation and then drive to their keynote speaking. But that never happens. As a speaker, you're on the road all the time. You know, I pretty much speak in Australia and Singapore, over here in the UK, rarely in America, and even more rare in Tampa, Florida. So I was really happy about six months ago to get a call from a company that wanted me to be their keynote speaker at their convention in Tampa, Florida. Yeah. I was so excited, you know, and it's funny how life works out, because two weeks before the keynote, I moved to San Diego. <laughs> Someone call that irony, some might call that bad luck. I'm just going to call it interesting timing. Which is what I'm here to speak with you guys about today, timing. Well, I guess not so much timing, but how you respond to the timing of things in life, because we are living in interesting times, are we not? Yeah, yeah. You know, the economy whew, is not what it was two years ago, that's for sure. You know, you can't turn on the news or open up a paper in London without seeing the term credit crunch somewhere in the news. By the way, not every industry is hurting in this economy. Did you know that? Um, I was listening to NPR in the States a couple days back, and they said that the ukulele business is up by over 70%. <laughs> Apparently, in depressed times, people like to buy ukuleles. <laughs> About six months ago, I started hearing some interesting noises in my house. Not typical settling of the house noises, but like cracking noises. And I couldn't for the life of me figure out where these cracking noises were coming from. And about a month into hearing these strange noises, one Saturday morning I got up to go toast a bagel in my oven instead of my toaster. Now would you guys like to know why I was toasting a bagel in my oven instead of my toaster? I don't own a toaster. Anyway, so uh, I went to open the oven. As I went to open the oven, the oven fell forward about six inches. And I looked underneath the oven, and there was this teepee of wood that had warped up like this. Turns out, the cracking noises were coming from a leak in my dishwasher that was very slow, but instead of pooling into the center of the kitchen, which it should have done, it decided to go underneath my cabinets, warping the wood, cracking and destroying my cabinets from underneath that I didn't see until it finally lifted the appliances right up off the ground. That's the bad news. The good news is I have homeowner's insurance. No big deal for me. I get a free kitchen. Woohoo! Right? So I, and I got a brand new kitchen out of the deal. Top to bottom. New cabinets, new countertops, new appliances, new wood floors. It was awesome. But they did. I mean, they really tore the whole thing apart. Like for about a month and a half, I could walk into my kitchen and look through the floor and see my car in the garage below. Right? So it was a really big destruction for about a month and a half of my house. The final day of the build, beautiful cabinets installed up top, nice new cabinets, beautiful floor. They're putting in the very last cabinet, and they, they didn't measure accurately the hole in the back of the cabinet where the water pipe goes through. And as they went to push it in, they busted the water pipe, flooding my house for a second time. <laughs> Interesting timing. <laughs> and. Uh, so, you know, I explained to the contractor that uh, um, it should be real easy to fix it this time because they know where the leak is. And uh, um, asked him if he could maybe accelerate it this time. And he said, yes, we'll get right on it. I said, how long will it take? He said, about a week. I said, great. Turns out, by the way, here's one to grow on. Uh, a general contractor's definition of one week, entirely different than a definition of one week for anybody else in the real world. So about 30 days into the first week, <laughs> They're, they're ready to put in that last cabinet again. Turns out that week was so long, they forgot why they flooded it the second time. As God is my witness, hand to my heart, they didn't recut the hole. They went to put the cabinet back in again and busted the pipe a second time, flooding my house for a third time. Now, at that point in time, I'm in the garage. At the time that it happened, I was in the garage with a general contractor. The garage door is open. 
and we hear this loud busting noise, we hear a lot of swear words, and then we look over and we start to see this sheet of glass water pouring through the, from the upper floor down through the garage, and, I, and there's literally this waterfall of, of water, of just sheet, clear sheet glass of water just filling up my whole garage. You should have seen the general contractor's face. He kind of looked like a four-year-old kid who just got caught breaking his mom's vase, you know, he had that <laughs> look, and, and, and I didn't know quite how to respond to it, you know? So, <laughs> so I folded my arms, and I leaned into him, and I said, Cool waterfall. <laughs>